today on The Spot. With the holidays approaching, we check out the new releases hitting store shelves. We'll also look at the new downloads hitting this week on WeShop Channel. Jody Robinson gives you the latest and greatest happening in our community spotlight. And Morgan Gray from Capcom stops by to demo Dark Void. All that and we give away some books today on The Spot. Hey everybody and welcome to Today on the Spot. It's Tuesday, December 8th. I'm your host Chris Waters, joined by Jody Robinson. How's it going, Jody? Great. It's going good. Uh, glad to have you on the show. Looking forward, we've got a community spotlight you're mm -hmm. giving us later on. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to talking about some of that stuff. But first, tell me about, you, you, you've been telling me you've been enjoying Dragon Age a little bit. Yes, I've been, uh, I changed from the beginner's level and now I'm normal because okay. I did that for about a week but I changed her to a human rogue. To a rogue? And yeah. so a rogue is like sneaking around, wearing a cloak, a little dagger, cloak yeah. and dagger. Yeah, little poison, little, little trick with the locks. And... That sounds fun. I wish you <laughs> luck and I wish, I hope you don't run into the same fate Brian Eckberg. Has. No, I don't think I will. Excellent. <laughs> That's a good attitude to have. Uh, we've got a great show for you today, folks. We got a game demo, Dark Void, uh, jetpacks. Rocket packs? Rocket packs, yes please. Air. Uh, as well as some trivia we told you about last week, community spotlight, and of course a whole bunch of other good stuff. But first it's over to the news desk. Tor Thorson's got today's latest headlines. Take it away, Tor. Hey everyone, it's your GameSpot News Update for Tuesday, December 8th. I'm Tor Thorson. Two weeks after Dead Space launched a critical praise in 2008, EA was already talking about a sequel. Now it's official. EA has announced that Dead Space 2 is in development for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. Though the company didn't say when the game would launch, an October Reuters report indicated that it will come out sometime in 2010. EA was equally cagey in what gamers can expect for Dead Space 2. However, the game will once again follow Isaac Clarke, the original game's protagonist who, spoiler alert, lives to tell the tale of zombie-like necromorphs taking over the deep space mining ship USG Ishimura. EA didn't offer much in the way of plot details, saying only that Clark will once again be battling the Necromorphs, albeit with new weapons, alongside new characters, and inside new environments. Dead Space 2 is just one prong of EA's Dead Space plans. The game series is also being adapted into a live-action film with director DJ Caruso at the helm. No release date for the movie has been announced, but given that Caruso's last movie was the Shia LaBeouf thriller Eagle Eye, I wouldn't get my hopes up. Well, that's it, your GameSpot News update for December 8th. For more headlines like these, head on over to news.gamespot.com. All right, thanks again, Tor. Always love the news updates. Now, folks, it's over to the Wii Shop channel. We're going to see what's new for download over there. This week on Wii Shop Channel, Nintendo's virtual console on the Wii houses a number of classics from days gone by. However, Ubisoft is taking a different approach with its release of the comic platformer Rayman. Originally available for the Saturn, PlayStation, and Jaguar in 1995, Rayman returns as a downloadable DSiWare title this week for 800 Nintendo DSi points, or $8. Ubisoft has made a handful of additions to the portable installment, including camera support and a time trial mode. Taeon's multiplayer-enabled puzzler Ball Fighter runs for 500 DSi points, or $5, and sees players matching light-colored spheres to clear a playing field. Pop Island is a whimsical capture the flag game in which up to eight players compete to secure the most markers across eight different levels. A demo for the 500 DSi point game is also available. Mindscape's Army Defender arrives on DSiWare for 200 points. Army Defender is a shooter in which gamers helm a machine gun turret to fend off increasingly difficult waves of attackers. WiiWare is in for a busy week as well. Magnetus is a puzzle game in which gamers use the polarization of magnets to form chains. Magnetus is available for 500 Wii points. Abbey Light challenges players to take a baseball bat to the everyday irritations of their lives with Stop Stress, A Day of Fury. Available for 800 Wii points, the game lets players wield a variety of blunt objects in environments ranging from traffic to an office building. Flowerworks from Nocturnal Entertainment is a light-hearted exploration-based adventure game and can be purchased for 1,000 Wii points. Lastly, the Wii's Virtual Console picks up two new additions this week, Capcom adds yet one more installment from its Street Fighter franchise to the Wii's online library, as the SNES version of Street Fighter Alpha 2 debuts for 800 Wii points or $8. Sega's Shinobi Ninja Action Platformer also heads to the Virtual Console this week for 800 Wii points. That's all the time we have. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday when we bring you the latest, this week on Wii Shop Channel.
Up next, we're taking a look at what the month of December has to offer us on store shelves with new releases. This week sees Nintendo launch the latest installment in its long-running action-adventure franchise, The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Announced for the DS at the 2009 Game Developers Conference, Spirit Tracks features the same visual style as The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, released for the GameCube in 2003. The game focuses on a magical locomotive, which Hero Link uses to travel around an equally magical island. Railway-based gameplay will consist of blowing up powder kegs on the tracks and shooing away wild animals with a horn blast. The game will also have numerous puzzles and dungeons. Just weeks after Pandemic Studios was folded into EALA, the Saboteur arrives for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. The Saboteur tinkers with the stale World War II genre by introducing gameplay similar to Pandemic's open-world action-adventure Mercenaries. Taking the role of Irish race car driver turned resistance fighter Sean Devlin, players are encouraged to wreak covert havoc upon the Third Reich in Nazi-occupied France. Konami's Silent Hill Shattered Memories for the Wii represents the final big-name release on the week. A remake of the Maiden installment in the survival horror franchise, Shattered Memories features a revamped user interface and puzzle system. Shattered Memories will reportedly be the last overseen by producer-composer Akira Yamaoka, who has been credited as the driving force of recent installments in the franchise. For further details on the week's games, visit GameSpot's new releases page. Release dates are based on retailer listings and are subject to change. Folks, you heard us talking about it earlier in the show. It's Dark Void demo time. You're going to see some jetpacks in action, but for a preview, here's Jody Robinson. That's right. Let's check out the demo now. Hey, everybody. I hope you like jetpacks and shooting alien robots in the face, because right now we're about to take a look at Dark Void. I'm joined by Morgan Gray from Capcom. Morgan, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I'm doing excellent. I'm excited to see uh, some Dark Void. Let's get right into it, Morgan. Let's jump in. Sweet. So what are we about to look at right here? So uh, this level is taking place about in the middle of the game. So Dark Void's a mixture of jetpack dogfighting, on foot gunplay with cover based, and sort of something we call vertical combat. And what we do is we mix and match all these games play styles within the level. So here we got our lead character, Will. He's finishing off a couple of these uh, alien UFOs, or bad guys, the Watchers. They've uh -huh. been watching humanity since uh, Sumerian times. He's in the void, alien dimension, taking them out, basically trying to protect the mothership that the humans are going to use to get back home. So you can see, uh, if you're familiar with uh, sort of the flight-based games, it's sort of a Crimson Skies-esque vibe to our dogfighting. It's intentional because, in fact, we're working with a bunch of guys at Airtight Games okay. that came from the Crimson Skies team on Xbox One. So Makes we're going sense. for that retro gun, 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 dogfight, knife fight in the sky versus uh, long-range missiles blowing up red boxes. So Will's going to clear the skies here, flying around uh, with guns in the jetpack because we figured jetpack cool, why not uh, up that ante by putting guns on it? Better than that, why don't we put guns and missiles? So <laughs> it only gets better that way. Exactly. So Will's going to crush this, and then we can show you how we sort of mix and match the flight, which on foot, which is really where Dark Void sings uh, uh, on the consoles. So the watchers are landing in uh, some ground troops. Again, they sort of found the location for this, this laboratory, basically. Right. Uh, you know, an you know, interesting character in Dark Void, uh, Nikola Tesla. In real life, uh, he disappeared for a couple days before he died. Oh, yeah. And we went, well, you know, we got the steampunky world. <laughs> we got a jetpack. Who should build it? How about Tesla? Makes so, sense. Make, why not, right? So he's built, you know, Will's gear. He's built his mothership. And uh, he's counting on you to keep the enemy at bay. So you can see here, this is where Dark Void gets really, really cool. You know, at will, you can grab cover. It's sort of very familiar if you play games like Gears mm -hmm. or Rainbow. Take them out on the ground. What's really better for the players is to use this jetpack to get up in the air, right? You get, to get a whole new perspective on the combat zone. Mm -hmm. We're looking for more of a sort of an action romp, per se, and less of a, like, slow and plodding. So we're hoping that players use a lot of mobility in the battle space here as they're fighting. Dark Void was a game that was originally supposed to come out this year, but it was delayed to January. What sort of added features has the team put in with that extra time? So it's really funny. So like, you know, a lot of everyone, I know everyone gets mad when games get delayed. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, it happens. It happens. It happens. Uh, but generally, no game gets delayed uh, for like, you know, a bad reason. And uh, right. for us, it was a very good reason because what we realized as we were getting the game together is we had this ground world and we had this flight world and you could mm -hmm. transition in between the two, but we didn't maximize on the promise of like how you would fight with a jetpack. Okay. So one of the big additions is this sort of hover combat ability he has, the going up and down like a Harrier jet. 
and then really like you know as you can see you know right there to get around the battlefield like sort of making the the combat feel much more like you'd expect from the sort of zippy acrobatic hero versus a slow and plotting so mm -hmm. we added in these those features for the combat and then we had to tweak the ai to deal with it and then change level setups so that was a big one we also doubled down on our uh, upgrade mechanics so mm -hmm. each one of the weapons has multiple upgrade levels player collects these things called tech points spends them like currency and can sort of mix and match how they want to have their gear okay. and that sort of rounded out the experience for us and we're like much happier with the end result so he's not a guy who starts super powered at the very beginning then? No. Kind of gradually? Yeah, he's like a schmo, right? He's a cargo pilot, ends up going to the Bermuda Triangle, ends up in this alien dimension. He's got nothing. He's got bumpkiss. He's got the leather jacket and mm -hmm. a smile. No <laughs> guns, no pack, no helmet. Hey, a leather jacket and a smile can get you far in life. Hey, apparently. <laughs> apparently. It works for rock stars, James Dean, yeah. and apparently our character will. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, over the course of the game, he gets more gear, and then the upgrading fun starts. Ooh. Yeah, melee attacks are, are definitely <laughs> yeah. very fun. <laughs> Now, one of the things that um, we saw at the beginning was the jet, pla the jet pack flying, but you can also hijack UFOs, right? Yes, there's a, there's a couple of enemy vehicles you can steal, mm -hmm. uh, and there's some friendly vehicles that you can uh, commandeer yep. uh, if so, for some reason you don't think just flying with a jet pack is fun enough. Actually, there's some balancing reasons. Like, Will, again, jet pack and a smile, right? <laughs> but uh, in the leather jacket, but it doesn't really, uh, it's not very protective. Right. So some missions is good as a strategy to grab like some heavily armored stuff to put a little metal around your body. But we kind of leave it up to the player. One of the fun things about Dark Void is figuring out which tactics will work best in certain situations. And generally, there's two or three different ways you can take something on, depending on how you want to roll. Well, Morgan, clearly there's a lot to do in Dark Void. Uh, one last question I have for you go is for it. when are players going to actually get to do that? When is it going to be out in stores on, and on which platform? I, I, and I, we need to mean it this time, right? Yeah. Assuming, okay, so yeah. it's coming. The truth. <laughs> the truth. All right, so it's coming. Dark Void is coming out in North America January 19th on the Xbox 360, PS3, and PC all at the same time. And uh, for anyone checking this out over in Europe, it's going to drop the 22nd on all those platforms. All right, sounds good. Morgan, thank you very much. Thanks for the time. All right, there you go. That is your look at Dark Void. Let's carry on with the rest of the show. Always happy to help you folks fulfill your recommended daily allowance of Jetpack awesomeness. Now that we're done with the demo, it's on to our next feature, a community spotlight featuring Jody Robinson. That's you. Yeah, it actually features GameSpot users. And GameSpot users, yeah. yeah. So for folks who maybe haven't seen a community spotlight before, give us a, give us a quick primer on what they're all about. Um, we go over a lot of announcements, so game night, uh, information about new features on GameSpot, um, and then obviously there's a member spotlight, and sometimes I'll showcase like user videos. Nice. They're, they're always entertaining. I'm looking forward to the next one. All right. Let's roll it right now. Hey there, this is Jody Robinson, GameSpot's Community Manager. This week's Community Spotlight shed some light on the best of 2009, James Cameron Avatar Weapon Packs, and the last game night of the year. I'll also share the hottest user videos and the Member Spotlight. The latest hype has been the anticipation of GameSpot's Best of 2009 awards. While I can't share details about what's been happening behind closed doors, the counter on the page does a good job of telling everyone when to drop by the feature page. For those of you who have James Cameron Avatar, we're giving away weapon pack codes for the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 versions. The weapon pack includes five exclusive weapons. Go grab your code and lock and load. The last game night of the year will be Left 4 Dead 2, held on December 14th with the GameSpot UK staff and December 15th with the GameSpot US staff. The editorial roster includes Chris Waters, Sean McKinnis, Mark Walton, and Guy Cocker. This week's Community Spotlight goes to Buffed for his research about speedrunner aficionados. Buff shares his report about communities that work toward player skill and glitch exploiting. Aside from creative blogs, GameSpot members are also quite talented when creating videos. Hooded Python posted a user video that displays LEGO versions of a duel between Devil May Cry's Dante and the Forced Unleashed Starkiller. TopsyMad55 posted another video that was featured for sharing a romantic song by a rogue in Dragon Age Origins. Leliana is a rogue and bard in the game that sings to the player she falls in love with. That's all for this week's Community Spotlight. Be sure to drop by the Spam Filter blog for news about other game spotters. This is Jody Robinson, signing off.
All right, folks, you heard about the chance to win exclusive Avatar weapon packs in our community spotlight just then, but of course, that's not all we give away here. We've got trivia on the show, and today we're giving away World of Warcraft and philosophy books as promised. Uh, you want one of these books? You want to get your hands on this and sort of pontificate on the moral dilemmas of the World of Warcraft? Jody's got the question for you. What is the current level cap in World of Warcraft? That's great. And answer that one and you'll win one of these philosophy books. And we've even got a bonus one here for you folks. Let me just pull it out right now. Da -na -na -na. That's right. Legend of Zelda and philosophy. I link, therefore I am. You want to win this one, we've only got one copy. You're going to have to answer this question. What is the only Legend of Zelda game in which Princess Zelda accompanies Link throughout the adventure? You think you know the answer to that question? Use the module on the side of the page to answer, or send us an email at onthespot at gamespot.com. Good luck! All right, folks, that'll about do it for us here on this Tuesday, December 8th. Uh, check us out on Thursday when we've got a whole new show for you, of course. Trivia, gaming goodness, and a daily demo with a Wild Western theme. Jody, uh, are you excited for that? Yes, Little yes. Little Tootin' Six Shooters? Nice. It'll be that kind of action and more on Thursday. Be sure to join us. Now, for everyone here on the GameSpot crew, I'm Chris Waters. Jody Robinson. Have a great week, everybody. And we're going to check out exactly how jetpacks feature into the hot and heavy action in Dark Void. That's a gross way to describe it. Hot and heavy? That's yeah. just no good. Uh, be sure to tune in on Thursday when we've got more good goodness for you. <laughs> good goodness. That's fun. I'm not going to say good goodness. Huh?